All right, we're live. Uh, this is Golden Turd, uh, season one, episode four here. Uh, we come in this week with two movies looking at, uh, with the theme being uh, children who kill people. Uh, movie number one was Devil Times Five from 1974 with uh, Sean McGregor and David Sheldon as directors. And second was Scream Bloody Murder from 1973, directed by Mark D. Ray. He only uh, actually, um, he only, only ever directed two movies, or three movies, and this is the second of, uh, of those, of three of those movies. I, I don't know anything about the other two. I, I didn't do like that kind of research on this. <laughs> Um, so, uh, going into it, let's just do a quick recap here on what, what happened in these two movies. Does one of you guys want to talk about Devil Times Five? Um, Jonathan? <laughs> as far as a recap goes? Yeah, just quick one, two minute recap. Just, you know, like, what, what, what's this movie about? Um, children gone wrong in the the acting business um i'm not entirely sure <laughs> uh, yeah there was a yeah it's a it's a uh, i don't know it's a, not really a slasher movie it's just a uh, flick about some small children with uh, psychotic tendencies that stumble upon a bunch of other people in a ski cabin and then torment them i think the alternate name was people that, toys okay um, I, think, I think that's the whole story yeah they, they like yeah the van that crashes they get Out of it they they find the cabin yeah. and then just they they slowly kill them all yeah as toys though like they use them yeah. as toys and yeah. i think that was the alternate one of the alternate titles was people toys and that's probably makes a lot more sense when you see the final scene and whatnot and mm -hmm. you're like okay there was something happening here game's over we're moving out to a new area Everything's driven from the amateurs. Okay, time to go. Oh, it's freezing out there. Well, we can't stay here anymore. Oh, for crying out loud, Mom. I don't want to leave them, Julie. Listen, everything's going to be all right. We're going to have some brand new toys soon. Promise? I promise. Okay. Well, there was definitely something happening. I mean, it wasn't, I'll say this, like, in this one, I didn't feel like, like I was watching the timer click down, like, to get to the end of the movie. It, it actually kept me entertained for the duration of the movie. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it was great. Um, e each one of the kids had these, like, eclectic personalities. You had uh, the, the, the token black kid was the military guy. You the CEO? What? Yeah, he's a CEO. When's Chow? Chow! I suppose if you're starving, I can get Ralph to rustle you up some cornflakes. 30 minutes. <laughs> what the hell's that? Didn't you ever play soldier when you were a boy? No, I didn't have time. Bullshit, you're still playing it. Um, you had the fire starter girl. You had... Where are the others? Just her hands in the bathroom with Mo. Had the, uh, the, the crazy nun lady. Say, I'm funny in the head. A and I make them nervous. I like talking to you. M maybe you're funny in the head, too. <laughs> you had the guy who was, like, uh, basically, like, face from the A-team. Only you know, he thought he was good at everything and was a pretty boy. You are A-W-O-L. I was talking to some fool down the hall. So shoot me. Uh, Whoopie doo. And yeah, then they just slowly kill off uh, several couple, couples. Or, what was it? Uh, Doc Pop 
Poppy Doc or Doc Poppy was the, the guy. What was it? Papa Doc. Papa Doc was the was the one who was like leading the whole lodge, and they were up there for some kind of business meeting. Yeah, he was just um, a dick, anyway, so he deserved to die. <laughs> I, I really hate to say it, but I I don't. Other than the fact that okay, so there is one thing you mentioned about this movie, and that's Harvey. The the only character outside of the kids who really made this movie for me personally was Harvey, who was just this yeah. sort of pudgy. He's, he ends up being he's the guy who plays Boss Hog down the line. I wish I could remember the name of the actor off the top of my head, but I, I can't. And yeah. but he was a very sympathetic character. He was one that I really felt for, and I was really rooting for throughout the movie. And, and Look, I thought you don't get away with that much. And I thought that being alone, the snow, the mountains. Not tonight. Harvey, I have a headache, a toothache, a backache, and I'm expecting the gout. Would an aspirin help? just like oh. all the other adults he ends up dead but um yeah, him and the other guy the the mentally challenged dude yeah, the first two that died were the first were the only like really likable yeah. characters yeah yeah they you know I, I i was thinking maybe the kids would keep him alive because he was just simpleton and he was almost childlike that's what i was also. thinking like he might be their friend we can't let him know it'll be our secret that that makes two of them I, I never washed dishes with a nun before, and I never had a secret. How's KP coming? Yeah, yeah, I was surprised when they when they let him get killed, actually. He was like the first to go in there. He was. Yeah, he that was, was that was very surprising. A, well, they kind of booby-trapped the generator, and it, you know, strangled him, so, um, yeah. It, it wasn't like they intentionally killed him but you know it's like well somebody's gonna die this way <laughs> i don't think there's too much else to say in this movie is, is i mean were there any like favorite scenes or anything that that like stuck out to you guys in particular what are you yelling about people little people what the hell do you mean what do you mean what do i mean i mean people Goddamn DTs. I'm getting silent. I think I well, I think the most interesting thing for me personally was I had more fun using IMDB and Wiki to like figure out what happened to these people's careers afterwards. <laughs> What's wrong with mom? She's sick. Blech. 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 <laughs> um, so did you did you learn anything interesting? Like, you know, like uh, the with the um, the there's one actress who played as lovely, and um, she or two of her kids were part of the little murder hobo band that they had going on there. Yeah, the, interesting. Yeah, the 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 face character uh, David was Leif Erikson, who I think you yeah. mentioned that you recognized. Yeah, I did. I kept thinking, who is that kid? So he went on to have a you know he had a music career and a yeah. and an acting career and was one of those. Uh, big teen idol type yeah thing. who flamed out and had drug addiction issues uh -huh, yeah. and then the daughter played mo who was the little girl um kind of the plain jane little girl that was creepy and weird yeah um and she ended up going into counseling for uh young adult or ch child actors oh yeah, so I imagine mom had plenty to do with that. Uh -huh. And uh, she was a cost. the mom was a costume designer for Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Band and was in the, yeah, like, really, like, the deep dive on the IMDb was, was pretty fascinating um, <laughs> cool. compared to what was going on with the rest of it. Right. <laughs> Speaking of the rest of it, let's, let's jump over to uh, Scream Bloody Murder. Oh. Uh. There's only one, there's only two characters we need to know about in this movie. Matthew? You here? And I'm going to say that's, that's Matthew and that's Vera. So Matthew's the main character and he's got mommy issues um, and daddy issues, I guess, because the, the movie starts yeah, more with, it, with him killing his father um, with a tractor. And then the, the most useless 
the most useless part of the entire movie is then he jumps off the tractor and then purposely has his own hand run over, I guess to make it appear as though it was an accident. <laughs> And so they sent him off to a mental hospital after this. And when he comes back, he his mother's been remarried. I don't know what I would have done without Mr. Parsons' help all these years since your daddy died and you got hurt. He's been a real savior to me. I know he's looking forward to the day when you come home just as much as I am. You and Mr. Parsons are going to be such good friends. I just know it. Mr. Parsons! He kills his mother's new husband. Then he accidentally kills his mother. And you didn't want him to touch her. You hated it. Please, no, no. You hated it. You hated it. You hated it. I'll kill you for it. Mama. And then he goes on, um, goes around, and anytime he runs across couples that are touching or kissing or making out or whatever, he freaks out and he kills the guy. And then he wants the mother to be, the, the woman to be his mother. Don't touch her. What? Don't touch her. What's the matter, Matthew? Don't touch her. Hey, man, that's not funny. That's not funny. That's not funny. What? What? Are you crazy? I'm not crazy. I'm not. Damn, what's the matter with you? And that goes on until he meets a whore that he likes named Vera. And Hi. You a friend or a customer? I, uh, I don't understand. A well, friend wants me to stay here and paint. A customer wants me to go inside with him. Which one are you? I'm a friend. Well, hello then, friend. And so he gets a crush on her, and then he ends up killing an old lady and her, and her um, housemaid uh, in this rich part of town so that he can convince Vera that he actually lives in the mansion. You have your hand behind your back again. What have you got now? Another pallet knife? A flower. Picked from the front yard of my mansion. Picked from the front yard of my mansion. How easily you say that. So he takes Vera over there, and then he starts keeping her there. See how peacefully you sleep here? You're getting used to it already. And just have her, like, do her art there, and that's all she's going to do. And they're just mm -hmm. going to live happily ever after. But she's like, no, man. That's not what I want. I want to go and just be a whore, like pay my bills and paint my paintings on my own time. And long story short, she tries to leave. He kills her. Uh, some other people stop by. Uh, he kills them. Um, yeah, then he freaks out, runs across town, uh, and he runs into a church and stabs himself with his own hook. <laughs> But the whole thing with the hook is, is it's this, they keep going back to it, but it's it's completely unneeded. It's it's just this superfluous part of the movie that they keep yeah. focusing on. That if you just took the hook out, it wouldn't change anything in the movie. And that's the part that I don't know that the hook just seemed to be in there. Like we don't have anything else to do. What what do we throw in a hook? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Right, like but the hook makes him the monster. He didn't have to get his arm run over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he kills a dog. I think we were all pretty much done with this movie um, mm. about the time yeah. he killed the dog. Yeah. When he killed the dog, it was like, uh, I, I can't. I, I just, you know, kill people if you want, but not animals. That's, that's too much. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't do that. So. Yeah, there was a method to kind of like what his mental deficiency was mm -hmm. up until that when he breaks in and he kills, it's the housekeeper, the, the maid, and then the dog in the kitchen. And you're like, when did it suddenly just like just 
transformed. It's like, it's not just he has a particular, like, needs to kill for his whole women and touching and men who touch women and whatnot. And then it was just like rampant murder. Right. Yeah, it, there never seemed to be any good reason why his character changed when he met Vera. Um, because then the sailor comes in and he touches her and has sex with her and he ends up killing right. the sailor, but he doesn't kill Vera or, or at least strangle her or try to tr or treat her like a mother right away. Um, so yeah, it just gets character. really muddled. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. they didn't have a, they definitely didn't have a, Clear enough design with I think where they wanted everything to go but it, it definitely like I I think I mentioned it in the thing when we were going through like I almost wonder if like Stephen King watched this and before he ended up <laughs> writing Misery um there's definitely some yeah and I think strong that, parallels there and this yeah. came out after Play Misty for me oh. which is kind of that same yeah okay yeah, that same yeah. Of that one so Play Misty yeah. is a good version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Reverse the genders yeah. and you've got, it's exactly. that, whole, that whole idea of like men aren't always the the psychotic killers who are yeah. trapping um, someone. Uh, it's yeah. a great Clint Eastwood movie. Oh, classic. it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, this came out a couple years after it. So you can mm. kind of see the mm. influence it had on the story. Um, yeah. I, it probably did. It, I think we're at that point in the evening, folks. Um, we're going to have to choose which one of these movies was the golden turd and which one of these was the stinkier poo. Um, there's, there's three of us here, so there's going to be no ties. No, no abstaining here. No, no abstaining. That's right. <laughs> so who wants well, to lead us? Who, 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 thinks, who, who wants to put a vote in for one of these, these two movies? Mm. Mm, I don't know. I'm like rewatchable, like a bad movie that's that stands on its merits as a bad movie. Yeah, just like good, the yeah, good, good, bad movie. Yeah, The Devil's Five People Toys. I really wish they would have gone with the alternate title because there's movie posters for it and everything. And they're pretty cool. But I gotta, I gotta go with People Toys here. It was, it was at least something that was like there's quotes. There's, there's, there are some. If you were watching it again, you'd be like, "All right, there's, there's some humor here." Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the music was very offbeat. Like they would use this humorous, like like that London music. Bridge. Like, yeah, like, it was childlike murder. tunes. Yeah, it was like childlike um, fairy tale kind of tunes. But sometimes it would get all warped, like whenever yeah. the kids were kind of warping out and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they were. It, it was, was a riff on good. London Bridge is falling down. Yeah. Yeah, it That's, was. I was trying to place it, but you're you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah, it was. And also, I I like that there was like the undercurrent of like, you know, the women were all after you know there was so many different currents with the adults, you know, with their relationships with one another and everything. Mm -hmm. So it had a lot of different things that yeah would be worth watching again. So I I agree with Jonathan. I would definitely go with Devil Times Five. This is going to be unanimous vote. Um, Devil Times Five. Like I said, I, I at least watched it through and through, and but the screams, bloody murder. There were just multiple times, especially moving in towards the last thirty minutes or so, where I was just watching the clock, just being like, "Is is this is this done yet?" Because I can see where this is going to play out, and I'm just waiting for us to get there. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. Like it was the I was doing other things. Yeah. <laughs> I had checked out on that movie so early. Yeah. It's uh, that makes me not want to ever have to watch something like that again. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, right. So if, in that sense, it's a winner. <laughs> if you never <laughs> want to watch another movie again, watch that. Yeah. So, uh, Laura, that means that the next choice here is going to be uh, between me and you, because we saw Shriek of the Mutilated in Bigfoot and Shriek mm -hmm. of the Mutilated won last week. So we have to choose now, unless Jonathan's watched Streak of the Mutilated. I have, have not. Between Streak of the Mutilated and Devil Time Spy as to which one of these oh. is the better bad movie. Oh. Jeez. Uh, what? I, I hadn't thought about that. Mm, I know. It's going to be a... <laughs> I, think, I think I know... Oh, man. I, I don't know. I think I, I would have to go with Streak of the Mutilated. 
And um, because Jonathan hasn't seen it, I don't want to give anything away, but I, the ending of that movie and um, how it really like went against uh, the trope that you were expecting, mm -hmm. I think set it apart for me. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it was a really unique, it was a unique movie. It wasn't what you thought it was going to be going in and mm -hmm. just going by what it described it as in the, like, yeah, in the comments or, you know, like in the trailer and everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think Shriek, yeah. All right. Well, we're, yeah, we're... Shriek of the Mutilated. Well, since this is episode four, this is going to reach us to the end of our of our horror branch. So we have to make one more decision, and that is we have to choose now between the Werewolf of Washington and Shriek of the Mutilated. Oh well, I know hands down what that is. What is it? That's Werewolf of Washington. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Like, like anytime I think anything else might win right now. I just yeah. think of the scene where they, where him and the president come out of the plane, and, they, and all the people are there, and like the werewolf and the president are in a, and are in a hand-to-hand -hand melee fight, in front of like the all the Department of Defense and all the media, and it's just like, and and I just, I, I don't know where we're going to top that right now. I'm, there are, I'm thinking there's going to be somewhere down the line that's going to do it. Yeah, but I there's don't. numerous scenes that I can think of that when I think of Werewolf of Washington. <laughs> it's endless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, that puts uh, Werewolf of Washington now into the semifinals for the Golden Turk. And now we've got to dip down to the other side of things, which is we just said that uh, Shriek of the Mutilated, or excuse me, Scream Bloody Murder Lost. So we got about we got to talk our stinkiest true talk here. And so if we're gonna go between it and Bigfoot, which one was the worst movie of those two? Wow, Bigfoot must have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was pretty it was bad. Cute. It was bad, but, but it was cute. To be honest, I think I'd go with Scream Bloody Murder. That's my gut. That's what I'm going with. Scream Bloody Murder, I think, was probably worse than Bigfoot. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, Bigfoot was, it had charm to it. Like, it did. Uh, we, neither one of us came away feeling like we disliked the movie, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched the movie all the way through, and I was interested all the way through, even though I knew it was a simple movie and how it was going to end and everything, probably, but it was at least entertaining. So, for the stinkiest poo, we have to send someone to the semifinals now, and that choice is going to come down to Beyond Evil or Scream Bloody Murder. So out of those two, which, which are we going for? <laughs> Ooh, wow. Beyond Evil was, that was something. That was a painful, oh, yeah. that, was a, that, that was a painful watch. It <laughs> took me a long time to get through. Did you watch all of it finally? Yes. Yeah. Um, they did have cool laser effects. Yeah, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Um, it was really bad. Now, yeah, I think Scream Bloody Murder is awful. Yeah, like, I do too. I still say Scream Bloody Murder. You, all right, so we got two for Scream Bloody Murder. I, I'm going to be the dissenting vote here, and I'm going to say I was so bored by <laughs> John Evil. I, yes. I, I, I just thought it was absolutely wretched. Um, uh, the, the special effects weren't good. It was just, it was so boring. Yes, the, the one, I will say one thing that they did, John Saxon, who plays the husband, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he is also in numerous kung fu movies. <laughs> okay. He's in Enter the Dragon. Is um, he? Mm -hmm. Yes. And if he didn't punch that orderly in the stomach, if he had that one moment where he got to <laughs> use some kung fu, I was going to write that movie off completely. <laughs> but he was able to, you can see his form if you go yeah. back and look at it. Check his form out. I'm he glad you brought that up because we actually didn't discuss when he punched the orderly when, when we were. Yeah. When we were yeah. yeah. He uses his kung fu form. Cool. It was, Bruce Lee taught stuff. it was one of the standout moments of the movie. Well, yeah. he was, he was built because they had several shots of him without a shirt on. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yep. they, 
they made sure they showed how he was like he's buff they know? probably wrote that in his contract he's like no i gotta punch somebody exactly. like it's gotta be right. there that's he what he do does that. yeah. uh -huh. well for the stinkiest turd then uh that that does it uh that puts uh scream bloody murder in in the run on the uh on the semifinals. <laughs> okay. So awesome. Well, we we've made it through our horror movies and the uh next four episodes, the next eight movies we're gonna watch are all going to be absolutely horrible science fiction movies. That would be a step up. To it. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> bad horror movie. I mean horror movies are bad in general, but they at are. least <laughs> Science fiction is really better. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. see. Yeah, we'll probably rue those words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might, you might, you might regret saying that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close this out now, and I want to okay. thank you guys for joining us for another uh, episode as we continue our search for the golden turd. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.